Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa man sara la sabilihi ila yawm al-deen amma bad. So in continuing discussing the book Arba'in and Nawawiyya, where the author Rahimullah that uh, collected uh, just around uh, 40 hadith regarding, concer uh, regarding concerning uh, uh, different different topics. And uh, last week we had started discussing hadith al-sadis. So last week that we had started discussing the sixth hadith in this particular uh, series of hadith that are mentioned and are stated that he mentioned concerning a hadith al-kulliyya. So his hadith are considered to be very comprehensive regarding uh, the topics that they discuss. So in discussing concerning uh, this hadith that uh, we started out last week by mentioning concerning the hadith of Nu'mal bin Bashir and that uh, we read the hadith and then also the translation of the hadith and then also we went second into discussing concerning the taqrij of the hadith. Then we mentioned regarding what is said to be uh, amongst the ulama of hadith what is referred to as ilm al-takhrij where we kind of somewhat mentioned regarding the sources of the hadith that are, where are some of the sources that this hadith can be found. So the author and now rahimullah that he mentioned the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir that the hadith I mentioned in al-halal bayin al-hadith that this hadith is found rawahu Bukhar al-Muslim but also we mentioned that others who have done some work around this particular uh, collection of an nawawi that uh, amongst them uh, Busiri, that he mentioned that regarding concerning this particular hadith that is found also in uh, a Sunan Arba. So this hadith is also found in Sunan Arba. So this hadith is considered to be of those hadith that uh, is collected by uh, a Sitta. So hadith that is collected by uh, a Sitta uh, or a Kutubu Sitta that uh, collect this hadith and also others and also others. Then uh, we mentioned regarding concerning that we discussed concerning the different wordings of this hadith, uh, as in different uh, books, you find different wording of the hadith. So different uh, collection concerning uh, the hadith is mentioned several places in Sahih Bukhari, that also the hadith is mentioned in Sahih Muslim and other books of hadith. But when we look, um, uh, when compared regarding the meaning or the wording of the hadith, that uh, one will find that uh, there's some difference regarding these wordings. Uh, so we mentioned those differences in the wordings and that uh, the wording that is actually mentioned here by an Rahimullah that is more similar to that of Sai Muslim. So the wording of this hadith that is more closer to that of the wording of Imam Muslim Rahimullah in his uh, as Sahih. Then uh, also we mentioned regarding concerning that even though regard, uh, we mentioned that of those who have uh, mentioned regarding that uh, there are certain books that are referred to as uh, al-book uh, concerning al-jam bin al-sahihain that certain books that some of the ulama have, uh, have uh, worked uh, put together where they have combined between Sai Bukhari and Sai Muslim and I even find that others who have com uh, combined between Kutubu Sitta but uh, regarding concerning of those who have mentioned regarding of those works that relates to al Jambi and Sai Hain that relates to the uh, combining between Bukhari and Muslim that uh, Imam Nawr Rahimullah that it seems as if that he more rely not directly uh, taking this hadith from Sahih Bukhara for Muslim, but rather we mention that he took this hadith from a book that is called Al Jam bin Sahihain Lil Humaydi. So we mentioned concerning this book of Humaydi, that uh, is a book where that uh, some have mentioned that you know of those who came later to a later, later ulama that they rely upon Al Jam bin uh, Al Jam bin Sahihain, uh, and of those the work of Al Humaydi. So when we go back to the work of Humaydi regarding his Jam bin Sahihain that uh, when he mentioned the hadith, so he mentioned concerning a hadith according to Al-Musnad. So he mentioned by way of Musnad, so he mentioned Musnad Nu'man ibn Bashir. And he's the 64th of the Sahabi that he mentioned in this particular collection. So regarding concerning his jam bin Sahihain, that he changed Al-Humaydi, that he changed the order, and he mentioned the, uh, the hadith based upon the Sahabi. So each Sahabi, he will mention their name, and then he mentioned a hadith, and he mentioned Muttafakun Alayh, and then he mentioned first a hadith, that are collected by Bukhari and Muslim from that particular Sahabi. For example, in Nu'man bin Mashir, he'll mention the hadith that are agreed upon between Bukhari and Muslim, then he go to the hadith that are mentioned by Bukhari and not with Muslim, and then mention, I mentioned, then he mentioned hadith that are mentioned by Muslim, not with Bukhari, that relates to that particular Sahabi. So as for this hadith, that uh, when one returned back to the work of al humaydi that he mentioned that the, the wording that is mentioned by Humaydi is the exact wording mentioned by an nawi the wording, and we mentioned that when one verified these ahadith, that with Humaydi and what is mentioned in Al Arba'in, that uh, they are more similar, the wordings are more similar to that of Humaydi uh, compared to the, the, uh, the original book themselves regarding Bukhari and Muslim in particular. So, that's something that uh, we mentioned for one to be uh, that's uh, 
we might find certain difference in some of the wordings and uh, what is mentioned by An-Nawawi sometimes is different from what's actually in the original uh, book of Bukhari Muslim and the reason is because that he took from a, a different source uh, then we we'll mention after then regarding concerning these matters of hadith then we we'll mention, we'll mention the tarjima of Nu'man bin Bashir so we we'll mention something regarding Nu'man bin Bashir then also we went on to mention the hadith uh, regarding the topic of the hadith regarding concerning what is the mawdu what's the topic of this particular hadith uh, which cover several topics some of the ulama who have given a heading to this book they mentioned tarq uh, al-shubahat that uh, a person avoiding avoidance of things which is uh, doubtful based upon what they ought to be the main theme of this particular hadith then they mentioned then after then we mentioned regarding the hadith uh, ashar ijmali a general explanation of the hadith and then we'll continue today inshallah ta'ala by mentioning concerning a shar tafsili regarding certain of the uh, certain points in this hadith we we'll mention some more detail regarding certain points and uh, also we mentioned that this hadith also discussed concerning the matters regarding al-khilaf so regarding concerning matters concerning khilaf or khilaf that may occur between the ulama then what's the mawqif and the position of the, uh, of the muslim regarding these khilafat that may occur between the ulama and uh, uh, as, so that also of things to be uh, covered. So as for concern the hadith, it's uh, tafsili. So explain the hadith tafsili regarding certain points or certain wordings, certain points in the hadith that will mention uh, those points with some detail regarding what is mentioned. So regarding as he mentioned the hadith that he started concerning in al halal bayin wa in al haram bayin. So as for this particular point or this uh, sentence that he mentioned that uh, one regarding halal or haram what is deemed to be halal and what is defined as haram uh, so regarding concerning what is halal and what is haram then uh, you'll find concerning the ulama you have uh, uh, a slight difference regarding how the ulama defined what is said to be halal so what is defined as halal we find a slight difference between the ulama and uh, based upon this that they mentioned regarding al halal istilahan so regarding concerning how the ulama uh, defined as halal in the al-malikiyah wa shafi'iyah that uh, they mentioned they defined halal they, they, they defined halal as being ma lam yarid dalil bi tahrimi so when they so mentioned regarding according to the aimmat uh, al and malikiyah that they defined halal as being ma lam yarid dalil bi tahrimi that uh, what i uh, mentioned concerning that where um, uh, halal is that where there is no evidence that it is uh, there's no evidence stating it is something which is haram so that's concerning what they deem to be halal so there's no evidence indicating that that thing is haram that's what they uh, consider to be halal so uh, when there's no evidence to prove that that thing is haram then they hold it to be halal so what their their view is that concerning that uh, these matters if there's nothing to say that thing is haram then that matter is halal so there's nothing to indicate that this matter there's nothing there's no text to state that that matter is haram then it is taken to be that which is halal according to their matter so according to this they mention two things that if there's no delil to say that matter is haram then it is taken it is taken as halal and second if that matter it is maskud an also there's uh, that matter is been there's nothing that have been mentioned on that matter so there's nothing that have been mentioned about that particular matter then they take it to be uh, halal and also if there's nothing to say it is um, forbidden then it is taken as as halal so that's how they defined and that's the rule that they follow regarding concerning matter which is halal so as for the ahnaf that uh, their approach regarding how they defined that which is said to be halal that in the anafiya ma wardat dalil bihilli so the ahnaf they cannot mention regarding concerning what they defined as being halal is by many mention ma wardat dalil that uh, when there's an evidence to prove it's halal so according to the ahnaf something is said to be halal because there's an evidence that's uh, available regard stating that that thing is halal so that's concerning how they defined uh, that which is halal and uh, based upon this that uh, they uh, if uh, so for something to be halal then the person as to there should be a delil indicating that that thing is halal also with them if that matter it is maskut, that matter there is no nothing mentioned, then it's considered to be uh, haram. So that matter is considered to be haram. So the, uh, that's concerning also some of the ulama regarding the madhahib that uh, their approach regarding what they deem to be halal and what they deem to be haram. 
So uh, that's concerning halal and haram, uh, or halal. Uh, so as for the definitions, that's concerning uh, al haram, al halal. As for they deem to be haram, how they defined or categorized what is said to be haram. So they mention regarding concerning of. Uh, so you find a definition that are given regarding concerning. They mention. And so, uh, as for concerning al haram, that they mention ma manaha, ma manaha min huwa shari al hakim. So al haram, they mention that what those things that they are al shari al hakim of all to be of forbidden. So haram, those things that are shari, that of old are uh, ruled to be those things which is uh, prohibited. So that with them is considered to be haram. So the haram are those things with the shari al hakim mana that he as old uh, that he as. Uh, uh, place uh, prohibition on those particular things. So that's concerning how they defined in general concerning what is deemed to be halal and what is deemed to be haram. Uh, and also with this, that the ulama concerning al-qawaid that they mentioned regarding concerning that matters that pertain to uh, halal and haram, that uh, as a general rule that they mentioned regarding concerning that, as for things concerning ibadat, so acts of ibadat or ibadah, so acts of ibadat such as salah, Siyam, Hajj, Wal Umrah, and the likes, acts that are said to be halal, that they own concern on Asl and Man. So they mention concern of the Asl, the origins. The original, uh, the origins is that a person is not allowed to carry out these things until he has an evidence to prove it's allowed. So regarding concern of Asl is Al Man. So the person is not allowed to carry out an act of Ibadah uh, until there's evidence to say otherwise. So that's concerning Ibadah. As for mu'amalat, uh, general affairs, general matters, then I mentioned concerning al-asl al-hil. So they mentioned the hasl al-hil, that uh, the asl in matters concerning mu'amalat al-hil, that uh, the asl goes back to those things regarding general affairs. It is permiss it's permissible until there's evidence to say otherwise. So they will kind of somewhat work with those two principles. So regarding matters of ibadah, if a person choose to do something or told to do, do something, then a person should provide delil. And before the person act upon something, then he should have some form of delil to give him the okay to carry out those, uh, to carry out that thing that is based upon that regarding things of ibadah. As for matters regarding mu'amalat, general affairs, then the asl is that the person is allowed to do that thing unless there's something from the sharia to say otherwise, unless so the person is allowed, the allowance is there until there's evidence to say otherwise. So they kind of somewhat work with those two general principles regarding al-halal and haram, regarding ibadat, and also, rega and, and also regarding mu'amalat. Uh, so that's concerning those matters that concerning al-hil, al-halal, wal haram uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, amongst the, the ulama of the Hanabila, that uh, I've mentioned al-haram ma thabatat. تحريمه بالكتاب أو سنة أو إجماع أو قياس أو أو قياس مرجح لذلك. so ابن تيمية رحمه الله he mentioned regarding الحرام ما ثبتت تحريمه بالكتاب. so حرام is those things that well can be affirmed that is حرام it can be affirmed and proven that is حرام by way of either the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى or or by way of the سنة or by way of إجماع or by قياس a مرجح or okay, yes, that is uh, strong. So those are of the things that are used regarding concerning the person trying to affirm something is haram by going back to of those source uh, regarding those matters. Uh, so that's concerning uh, all the ulama kind of somewhat put in perspective regarding how they defined and how they look at those things which is said to be haram. So regarding concerning, as we mentioned, that ibadah, asluha, Al-man, that also concerning ibadah, that is forbidden, according to matters concerning al-fiqh, matters uh, regarding concerning matters relating to al-fiqh. So matters regarding concerning al-fiqh, that ahkam uh, al uh, that it goes based upon those two guidelines regarding ibadat, and also second regarding mu'amalat. Also regarding the word, and I mentioned, al-halal bayin. So the word bayin, in a sense, is something zahir, something which is zahir, apparent, or something which is clear. So al-bayin, meaning concerned that matter is very clear and somewhat straightforward, 
that uh, so that's concerning al halal bayin it is something which is very straightforward and clear that doesn't have any uh, type of ambiguity that is attached to it so that's concerning those matters regarding al halal and haram then from this ibn rajab and others have mentioned regarding concerning things regarding haram al mahda that you find that matters are said to be halal and things that are said to be haram that they put them one categorize those things regarding al haram uh, where you find our uh, mahda where things are haram which is clear cut haram so you have things that are halal mahda is very clear straightforward where there's no ishtiba there's no form of doubt regarding that matter and also likewise you find certain matters that are haram mahda that is very straightforward and there's no doubt and ambiguity regarding that matter so they mention regarding concerning those things which is haram mahda uh, and likewise, they mention an example regarding concerning al uh, haram mahda that uh, of no'an, of two types. Things that are haram due to its was, due to its certain qualities, or this, uh, certain uh, uh, characteristic of that thing. So the ruling is based upon that thing may have certain characteristics that may deem it to be haram. Such as concerning, matters concerning uh, al khamar because of khamar, concern it, uh, because of the intoxica uh, intoxication that goes along with it, so it's considered to be haram. Also concerning uh, other matters that may be deemed concerning al-mate, because of being something which is najis, so you might find certain things that the ruling is attached to certain what certain qualities that is attached to that particular uh, thing. So based upon this, it's said to be haram, due to certain things attached to it. Then also you find a second type of thing which is haram, uh, because of a concern that bil uh, kaps based upon how that thing is achieved or all that thing is gained or attained. So certain things regarding other person, the thing or the asl, the origins of that thing may be halal. But the person have acquired it in a way which is haram. So it made the whole thing become now haram because of the way it has been acquired. But uh, so you'll find concerning that uh, riba, concerning some type of business transactions that a concern the person steals then that uh, money, that it is, the origin, it is halal. But because the person now have taken that money by way of stealing, it becomes now haram for that person. So of those things which is haram, either because of how it is acquired, it becomes haram. And also, second, that things can, can, uh, can, uh, are said to be uh, ha uh, haram based upon that certain osaf, certain type of was that is attached or certain qualities that is attached to that particular uh, thing. So that's concerning halal regarding uh, haram, regarding those matters. Then they mention regarding concerning in uh, al-halal bayin wa in al-haram bayin. Then they mention third, baynahuma umurun mushtabihat. So the third of those things, so you find that matters regarding ahkamu sharia, that uh, you have a category of things that are said to be halal, that are clear. Second, certain things in the sharia, that are said to be haram and that's clear and known to most and to all. And then you'll find a third category of things that are between both. They fall in between both. That I mentioned, and they, mentioned, they, they place them as umurun mushtabihat. Things that are unclear, are doubtful. Doubtful they mention where it's a possibility it could fall into haram and a possibility it could fall into halal. So it's in between. Where does it go? So it's somewhat an in between. Unclear, does it go, is it uh, towards the thing which is halal? Is it be actually placed with halal or haram? But for the person, it's unclear as to which category it actually falls into. So regarding concerning umur, that they, the reality that they fall into two categories, those things which is halal and those things which is haram. But you find a third category, for some people, it is un, they are unclear as to where it is to be placed. So the third category where it is the one that are in between, it either for their pre where people uh, some are unclear whether this is to be classed as halal or class as haram. So it becomes of those things become doubtful. So as for mushtabihat that lies between halal and haram, that uh, you have a, uh, a discussion regarding concerning uh, where they mentioned that al khatabi that I've mentioned regarding uh, that uh, uh, this matter concerning mutashabihat, that regarding concerning tashabba, 
al abad al nas that i think is somewhat it is unclear to some people is doubtful towards it is doubtful to some do no bad where others it is not like it is not per se unclear to them so you'll find regarding thing which is mutashabih that some people for them it is unclear but for some people it is clear so the matter they say it is nisbi it is something which is relative regarding thing which is uh, uh, doubtful it is nisbi so regarding concerning this matter concerning what is said to be uh, these matters that are doubtful that uh, yeah but this, uh, uh, they mentioned regarding concerning that these matters are somewhat unclear these matters are somewhat uh, unclear where the person is undecided regarding is this said is this thing that the ruling actually is that is haram or is this thing actually halal so for them the matter is unclear so with these matters regarding concerning ahkam or sharia as we mentioned things are either halal or things are haram or things are unclear but regarding concern the ulama regarding concern the science of uh usul al-fiqh so in the science of usul al-fiqh that they categorize of those things that are covered in usul al-fiqh which is a very important science to be studied so regarding usul al-fiqh is a very important science to be studied and usul al-fiqh they kind of somewhat center over certain things so the science of usul al-fiqh is to equip the person that is able to can extract ruling from the islamic sources from proper sources and also be carried out by people who are qualified so usul al-fiqh is for the person one to identify what are the various rulings that can be passed on things is this thing so the, the ulama mentioned regarding those matters that can the ruling that can be passed on things regarding ahkam or sharia either a thing get fall into either they say uh ahkam taklifiyah which is either something it's either ijab wajib mandub so either something which is wajib i would say it's a, a must to be done or something which is mandub something which is hat which is recommended to be done or third something which is mubah it is something which is it is permissible it's allowed and the fourth the fourth of the ahkam sharia taklifiya is something which is karaha or makru something which is disliked to be done and the last and the final the fifth being that which is uh, they mention uh, at tahrim or hurma that thing is something which is forbidden so taklif uh, ahkam sharia at taklifiya are khamsa wajib mandub mubah makru and tahrim clear so regarding concern we mentioned that uh, the matter regarding halal and haram that the ulama mentioned concerning that, uh, that uh, as for things that can be said to be halal things that can be said to be halal that at times the word halal can sometimes uh, be used in relation to something when one wants to say that thing is wajib so a person might use that at times the word saying something is halal so under the umbrella of halal that wajib fall into it mandub fall into it also muba fall into it and to some degree makru fall into something being halal uh, and as for something being said to be haram or haram then fall on the category only of something which is tahrim it's not allowed mamnu'ah and of the word also that is used regarding tahrim mamnu'ah something which is mamnu'ah forbidden so these are like the mustalahat that are used by the fuqaha and the usuleen regarding placing judgment on things so halal can be subdivided into something being at times wajib at times being mandub muba and even concerning makro so the difference between those ijab as i mentioned something which is wajib where i mentioned al wajib ma talab al shara fi'luhu ala wajh ilzam ala wajh ilzam yathab aw yujur fa'ilu that uh, the sort of mention regarding concerning what is said to be wajib wajib with the fuqaha that they mention wajib ma talab shara something have been uh, uh, commanded to be fulfilled by the shara by the legislator al-hakim by way of compulsion 
the person who does this, yuthab wa ya'jur, that a person who does this, then he is rewarded. And the person who does, uh, under wa'id. The person under wa'id. So that's concerning what is said to be uh, wajib. So wajib is something which has been requested by way of the shara to be done, but by way of compulsion. So that's concerning. And then al mamdub that a person is uh, requested to carry out that act, but not by way of ilzam, not by way of compulsion. And al mubah you saw we, uh, that, is, uh, that the, the person is allowed to do or not to do that thing. That thing is somewhat. Uh, so that's concerning those matters. So concerning matters that relates to halal and haram, that halal can be subdivided, that uh, fall in the four things. Wajib, mandub, mubah, and makro to some degree. And also as for al-haram, then what falls on that is one category, which is thing which are said to be uh, tahrim. So fall on the haram. So that's concerning ahkam al-shari'iyah, regarding those matters. As for saying something is mubah, as for saying something which is uh, mubah, then uh, is meaning concerning to that matter concerning mubah is permissible, that sometimes is used regarding halal. So at times a person might say something is halal and use the word mubah. Oh, that, ha that matter is mashru'ah. It is allowed, legislated, it is allowed. They mention regarding al-istiwa, tarafahu, where uh, al muba is where doing it or not doing it, they are said on their, on their unequal par. Doing it or not doing it, they are unequal par. So not one is given precedent over the other. As for mushtabahat, that they mention regarding concerning that, uh, They mention, oh well, that, uh, that uh, regarding that, as uh, Shawkani mentioned, a thalit mushtaba khafahu, things which are somewhat, the matter been, is some, the matter is unclear. It's been somewhat not, so the matter regarding al mushtabahat, those matter mushtabahat, those things are unclear. So it's somewhat hidden. Concerning the ruling of that thing is somewhat hidden. They mentioned regarding mushtabahat that uh, Ibn Hajar rahimullah have mentioned in his uh, Fatul Bari that a uh, khilaf between ulama regarding what is said to be mushtabahat in this particular uh, meaning, in this particular hadith. What are said, so you have a khilaf between ulama as to what they defined in this hadith as concerning things which is mushtabahat, things that are unclear. So a khilaf between the ulama. Of the ulama who mention regarding what is said to be mushtabahat, they mention ma ta'aradat fihi zahir al-adillah. Ma ta'aradat fihi zahir al-adillah. So we find they said there's a conflict between the apparent adillah. So there's delil, but it seems to be conflicting. There seems to be some conflict regarding the delil, regarding that matter. That is said to be mushtabahat because there's delil, there's evidence, but there seems to be some form of conflict. Now, that is of the meaning that is given regarding mushtabahat uh, between some of the ulama. They mention khawl al-thani regarding what is said to be mushtabahat. They mention iktilaf al-ulama. Those matters where there is a khilaf between the ulama. So mushtabahat are those things where there is a difference between the ulama. Of the third of the view regarding what is said to be mushtabahat in this dimension, bainahuma mushtabahat, that dimension, that uh, a third position concerning musamma makru, those things that are said to be disliked. So, uh, which is preferred to be uh, left. So, the third meaning is regarding that uh, mushtabahat is regarding makru. And the fourth meaning that is given by some of the ulama that uh, mushtabat is regarding al-mubah, those things that are mubah. So those are of those views that are mentioned regarding some of the, ul the ulama, regarding what they deem to be of this category regarding mushtabahat. That some mentioned khilaf between the ulama, that the difference between the ulama on that matter. Some mentioned ta'arud, adillah, 
that some the evidence is somewhat seem to be conflicting. Some mention makro that matter said to be makro, or some mention mubah. But uh, so you have that conflict or that difference between ulama pertaining to what is said to be of this cat, what is defined as mushtabahat or mushtaba. So as for the next matter that is mentioned regarding that, uh, they mentioned regarding concerning ahkamu sharia. So regarding concerning masail ahkamu sharia regarding halal and haram, that uh, either you will find that certain masahid, it is known to some, and some matters are not known to some. So either matter, it is known, or some matters that are unknown, regarding their final hukum. So masail al-shari'ya, or the matter we can say, ma ishtahar, some of those matters are well known, and there's an ijma, where the real is for, there's the matter is known to most of the Muslim, and also there's an ijma on that matter. So in those matters become clear cut. Either can the ulama they agree there's a delil, plus also the ulama all agree that the matter is halal, or they all agree that the matter is haram. So that matter become clear to all. Then you'll find certain matters where you find the ulama they find that there's a khilaf. There, there's a, a khilaf uh, between the people, and we'll discuss. We said we discuss those things uh, later regarding those re matters regarding khilaf khilafat bina. Al-ulama. So regarding concerning certain matters that are said to be uh, not clearly known, that uh, you have reasons, and also we'll discuss some other, but uh, of those reasons where sometime between the ulama, where there's a khilaf regarding, regarding saying something halal or saying something haram, that you might find between the ulama or there's a khilaf between the ulama. And this is Reason that at times, or we discussed this further, said, of times it could be concerning there's a text, as I mentioned, could be something where there's a text, but there's some uh, thing which is unclear regarding the text. So, for example, that there's a hadith, but not many of the ulama may be aware of that hadith. So in the matter that is being, uh, being discussed, there's evidence. But not many ulama is aware that there's a hadith on that matter. But there's a hadith. And the reason, what could be the reasons? That concern that you might find that certain books of hadith are more well known. And the hadith in those books are still limited. So you find that uh, in... Uh, a monk, if that, you find certain books concerned that you might find certain books concerning Kutub Sitta is well known. Sa? Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, at Tirmid, Nasai, Ibn Majah are well known, Al Muatta. But you have other books of Hadith. And some of those books sometimes may not be as well known. Even the Ulama mentioned at Kutub Sitta that, the usul, uh, uh, that you find the usul of a Hadith are contained in those books. But you might find still certain Masail. That there's a hadith that may be mentioned, but they are not within those more well-known books. Nam. So you could find so there may be nas, but those the, the text is not known to some. Uh, it is mentioned by Ahmed Shakir, one of the ulama of Mr. Qana Qadi, and also uh, mentioned that uh, of the people who gave some attention to hadith. Nam Ahmed Shakir, rahimahullah, that he mentioned that uh, his father also was an alim. So Ahmed Shaki was an alim and also his brother. So he mentioned regarding concern as for himself, the system that they had regarding himself, that in his, uh, that the system they followed, that before he and his brother start to specialize or incline, put more effort in a particular science. So Ahmed Shaki inclined towards hadith and the likes. Uh, his brother towards things concerning Al-Adab, Luga and, and the rest, and the likes. That Ahmed, they mentioned that both of them, so his brother more concerning things of the language and Adab. That's his brother. But he mentioned that before they can somewhat specialize in their field, that they are to read through Kutubu Sitta. They are to read Kutubu Sitta. Naam? So you might find that also concerned, like in place, like concerning Ali Hadith in Hind. So the system also like place in, like in Hind. That before a person becomes a specialist in a particular field, he's going to go to fiqh, he's going to go to tafsir, he's going to go to hadith, then he has to cover kutubu sitta. 
ma with water. Nam? So you might have a certain system, so that's an, a system that was established before. Now today, not many may, may follow that system. So a person might say to be a faqih, but I've never read Kutubu Sitta. Meaning that there may be hadith on a particular tablet that he's unaware of. But he may have studied, or he may have studied Bulugul Maram. He may have studied Bulugul Maram. So Bulugul Maram is just close to 1,500 hadith. Oh, just, right? So the person may miss other hadith. And Bulugul Maram, that sometimes Ibn Hajar, Rahimullah, Ibn Hajar, that is thing, he doesn't mention the shahid from the hadith. So he made a hadith very small. He didn't mention the hadith in full at times. Just the portion that he needed. Nam, and sometimes I find shortcomings in some time of, in, on that matter. But the general thing, like in our time, a person might said to be a faqih, but he have not read Kutubu Sitta. And a person may say to even be that he is a special in Hadith, I never read Kutubu Sitta. And that's crazy. That's crazy. Nam? So the things concerning so the, the shahid that I mentioned concerning at times the khilaf between the ulama is because of uh, a person, you may have a text that is available or there regarding the matter being discussed, but the person is unaware because he hasn't read much. Nam? Uh, and especially in our time, we find books of hadith are many. That books of hadith uh, are many. So, uh, and as we mentioned the last time regarding the concerns of the ulama, is Ibn Abbas Salam that they mentioned regarding before giving fatwa that they are to refer back to Ummah Atal Kutub. So, they mentioned concerning Ummah uh, umma Atal Kutub regarding concerning the matter regarding Al Fatawa, which are a book like uh, we mentioned last time. Who remember? Remember? Sheikh Taj? No, no, Ummahat al Kutub fil Fiqh. That before they mentioned, uh, you remember? Al Mughni. Mughni is about 15 volumes. So you have Mughni is 15 volumes and thick volumes. Also, the book of Muhalla Ibn Hazim. That book, the more recent print, is 20 volumes. The book of uh, Al-Sunnah Al-Kabir or Sunnah Al-Qubra Lil Bayhaqi. So Bayhaqi Rahimullah, that is a book that kind of somewhat is like an encyclopedia regarding matters relating to fiqh. That book again is about 20 volumes plus. Nam, but they mention regarding giving fatah concerning the regarding hadith. So every time you mention hadith will athar in that book regarding matters relating to fiqh. So all the hadith regarding a particular so an important reference regarding if you want to know what is mentioned regarding a matter of that, that book become important. Also understand the fourth book uh, we mentioned Muhalla, Mughni, Muhalla, Sunan al-Kabir and the fourth book is at tamhid Ibn Abdul Bar. Ibn Abdul Bar Rahimullah one of the ulama of Andalus. Also that book is about 90 volume. That book is about 19, 20 volume. So it shows regarding concern the person regarding fiqh, that a person need to have, they said, uh, they have read well. Nam? So read a muhtasar in one volume, then that's not sufficient to give fatawa. That's not. Uh, but we mentioned that uh, after the thing that you might find, sometimes find ta'arud between concern aqwal is because of uh, not following that thorough system. Not following a very thorough system regarding so said that the first of so that's regarding that point uh, then also you might find that the difference sometimes may come between the ulama regarding these matters why they have a difference in brief that sometimes find text but you find that more than one hadith on the same topic so on the same topic you find several hadith discussing one topic one of some of those hadith seems to be saying something is halal, some one direction, other going another direction. So how to harmonize those hadith to come to one final conclusion? Then that becomes of the thing the person has to be mindful of that there may be texts on that matter, several texts, but some that they need, but they seem to be some conflict from what seems to be what is apparent. So how to harmonize those texts and to come with one final conclusion? 
So some might be seen, some might be indicating that something which is wajib to be done, and some is not wajib. So the person ought to harmonize between those. So those are the things the person have to take into consideration. So as mentioned by Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, that uh, he wrote an important book regarding concerning even how to understand how to give other a suit to the ulama. Where we don't become someone who become very harsh towards the ulama. Nam, that why sometimes they have difference, and even sometimes why they sometimes have different aqwal on a matter, different statement on a matter, because that uh, one he mentioned that it can be summarized into three reasons why there's a khilaf between the ulama and why we should excuse them. Nam, so he wrote a book just on that topic. Rafa al Malam and Aimat al Ahlam. So he wrote a book just kind of someone to aid the talib regarding how to look at the ulama. And how to understand why you might find a difference between them. And even the same individual at times may give different judgment for reasons. So he mentioned in summary three reasons that I went into detail in explaining or breaking those things into further details. So he mentioned one that at times a text might come to an alim and he can have somewhat in the sense of the first thing he established is that an alim, the, uh, an uh, alim of Islam. The ulama of Islam that they do not intentionally go out to go in contrary to the, to the text. So the alim, he doesn't intentionally try to oppose the text. That's not his intention. So the alim, the general thing that we expect from the alim is that his intention that he wants to arrive at that which is correct. But you have procedures to be followed. There's procedures to be followed. So the alim, but the alim at times may get it wrong. So, so that the reason of why I might find a conflict between some of those ulama and it seems as if they're going against the text is that one, a text might be there, but that alim is not aware of it. So maybe a text that is there, but that alim, it may not have reached him. So for another, and you find that, for example, Imam, some of the ulama, they mentioned the ulama of old, that these things does occur. So you might find that he might give a judgment based upon the text, was un, he was unaware of the text, so he gave his own ijtihad. But his intention wasn't to go against the text, but he was not aware of the text. So he had to rule, pass a judgment based upon other principles. Another reason that a text may reach an alim, but for him, he sees that text as, uh, he sees that text as something which is, for him, it is sahih, but it is mansukh. From Bab Nasik wal Mansukh. So a text may come to his attention, but he said that text, yes, it was one point applicable, but later on it was abrogated. So based upon that, he said that uh, that would be abrogated, then it is not to be followed. So at times he may come to a conclusion, the person thinks that he's going against the text. So there's and other reasons. Or oh, a text may read a him, and all of that text here is reach him, but he don't hold it to be Sahih. And hadith is in front of him, but for him, he sees the hadith as being da'if. So he cannot act upon it because of the proof that, that he sees that the hadith is not valid, so are not authentic, so the hadith for him is as if it doesn't exist. But for another, may see the hadith as authentic. So he act upon it. So sometimes the content is something different between the ulama, uh, where they might go against a text, he said, a text is there. But why they differ with the text? For those three reasons. Then he went into detail regarding those matters. So I so said that we'll discuss those matters, inshallah ta'ala, uh, further. We'll discuss some of those matters further regarding khilaf and certain guidelines regarding how to maneuver in cases like those. So they mentioned regarding concerning most, uh, those matters that are unclear. That he mentioned after then, لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس That many people are not aware of those things. So it shows regarding that concern, those matters which fall into some matters in the Sharia, that some people may not be aware of this. And he mentioned كثير من الناس There are many. So you find that, yes, majority of the Muslims are said to be the, ma ma the minority of the people of ilm. The minority are the tulab and the ulama. Compared to the, the Muslim uh, uh, total population uh, number. So you find that still, 
the ulama will consider to be still a minority. The tullah, you want to add also tullah al ilm, will it still be a minority compared to the general mass of the Muslim? So you find that uh, certain masail that for most are aware regarding it being halal, some masail, even the general Muslim are aware that it's something which is haram, and then you find certain masail, for them it is unclear. But for the ulama, it is clear, are known as to what's the appropriate ruling on those things. So I mentioned, لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس That many people are not aware of them. That you do find those who may not be aware and that they are the majority. They are many. They are the many of the people. So sure, we got the akam sharia that at times some of the Muslim, many of the Muslim may not be aware of things. May not be aware of the appropriate ruling for that particular matter. And in those cases, but, but there will always be a group of people who are aware of this. And they are the ulama. They are the, the ulama. And as mentioned, so in those matters, that one refer back to them. One refer back to the ulama. So what mentioned regarding concerning the hadith is, uh, this particular hadith can somewhat is more discussing concerning that matter that can be classed as matter which is fiqh related matters. Akamu sharia. So the people who are special say you have a group of ulama, so said with uh, the signs of Islam, that they're intertwined together. So hadith is intertwined with fiqh, and fiqh is linked back to hadith. And also tafsir is linked back to fiqh and hadith. So all the sciences that they're, they're linked, they're intertwined together. Now, so I mentioned that, so the person who's a muhaddis, his goal and objective is to authenticate regarding things that are said to be hadith. That regarding concerning, can, we, uh, can this thing be traced back to the Prophet in a way which is with certain guidelines in place. Then after the person verifying whether this hadith is authentic or not, then oh, the next thing would be, what can we take, if the hadith is authentic, what can we take from those hadith regarding ahkam al sharia Regarding rulings that can be taken from these things. So the signs of Islam that they intertwine. They intertwine together. And also we discussed concerning who is a mujtahid. So a person understand concerning that. In certain masail that mentioned that In certain masail that it is not for everyone to speak about it. Not everything, everyone needs to speak about it. Why? Because not everyone is qualified enough to speak about it. There are certain masahil, it's only for the ulama to look and to discuss those things, and everyone else wait. If they haven't spoken, then you remain silent. Because it, you are not obliged to speak, and you will not answer to speak until the ulama have spoken. So there are certain things you mentioned that, of masahil, where it's for the ulama to study these masahil, and then they will pass their judgment on those matters. But it's only for them, those who are qualified. And there's certain things where a person may be a talib al ilm, but he's not to that level where he can pass his own independent judgment. He only mentioned what had been discussed by the ulama. He only discussed what had been mentioned and discussed by the ulama. But he cannot proceed the ulama. So it's for each person to know where he lies regarding uh, those matters. Is a person of ijtihad? Or is of those people who are not of al ijtihad, but maybe a talib al ilm, and maybe a strong talib al ilm, qawi, but he's still not a mujtahid. So, certain things, it is not upon him that he needs to speak. I was said of the problem that sometimes we find with some of the, with some of the they say duat, they refer to them as duat. They have people categorize regarding people who they say are talib al ilm. That you have those who are the duat, they are at the bottom of the level. They are the ones who give all the talks and speech, general talk, but they don't do detailed lessons. They are called, refer to them as, it's Allah wa alam, that they are the ones who are the duat. Is that the case? The duat, they are the ones who, they are not properly qualified to teach a book. Properly. But they can do, independent, can do little talks here and there. Nam. But, uh, so they said they are the duat. Uh, then you have those who are the talabatul ilm. 
So those ones who have gone through a regiment of studying Islam to, some, to assist him and after the, the various areas of science of Islam and they're able now to understand properly the books of the ulama and the aqwal of the ulama and know how to use the works of the ulama and how to make tarjiyah how to, uh, how to uh, maneuver between uh, how to make a conclusion based upon the conclusion of the ulama when they differ so those are said the tulabul ilm and they're on different different levels Nam. then you have those who are considered to be the, the mashaykh the mashaykh so the mashaykh that uh, they are the ones who are above the they are not to love they are to love but they have the higher level but they are not the people of fatwa and ijtihad they're not the people so they can teach again on an higher level they can pass certain judgment on certain things but they still certain things is not for them they have the old, they have their teachers the ones who are above them Nam, so you might find so, and then you have the people who are al-ijtihad, or fatwa. The ones who are now, the people use the word al-fatwa. Nam, so the ones who give fatwa, uh, which will be now a minority. <coughs> so they have, like, for example, the, uh, the duat, no doubt mentioning names, uh, that the ones that you might see their face are on YouTube the most, giving dawah in public. But they are, not, they are not known, they are not known to have studied in any form of systemized way, properly. They haven't followed a systemized uh, system regarding their studies. Regarding one, they have studied all of their science, you know, uh, over and through, uh, through uh, uh, specific works or books. They are not known for those things. But they may have studied with a person here and there. They have may sit in the halakat al-ilm here and there. They might study above of kitab al-salat, two hadith from a, a set of hadith from Bulugu Maram, but not Bulugu Maram. They might have studied Thrat al-Usul in most part, but they have studied, if they have studied anything, would be the basic stuff. So those people, they can maybe give some dawah, and that's about it. They may can teach, but with books that translating of books and just sticking to the book that they're teaching because they're not equipped sometimes to compare between the aqwal of the ulama so if they're going to go a book they're going to be very reliable and known and they stick to it also consulting with others because they're unable sometimes to make distinction between uh, certain books that may uh, I, that may have differences even on the same topic uh, then you have the people of tulab who have maybe graduated from Islamic University, or have studied with the Mashaykh for a long time, several years. They have studied for several years and through a program. They have studied all of their science, so they have something, they have the key regarding Talabat al-Ilm. They have the key regarding Talabat al-Ilm. So they know about all the science, and they have reached a level where they also they can make some comparison between the books of the ulama. So for those ones, they don't have to stick to one particular book to teach. Because they can pull from different sources and weed and, put up, uh, and take that which is beneficial. And then you have the ones who are said the So those will be the ones that have, uh, have reached where they're. Uh, some may be teaching in. They may teach in universities and institutions of higher level studies uh, and most may have degrees or known that also have works that they have done concerning books so they are known and have done tahqiqat of books so they are known to be of that level and then you have the, the ones who are above them so that the mufti of Saudi will be now on the highest level they will be on the highest level and the ones who are similar to those but for each to know where he lies regarding that particular uh, system, where one lies. Uh, so they mention kathir, la yalamuhunna kathir min al nas. So the person to know concerning what I know and what I do not know. And who to refer back to on certain matters. Who to refer back to on certain matters. So I said, after thinking concerning that, this matter, we we'll discuss that, that of the problem that have occurred. For many years, not just now, for many years, is returning back to people who are not properly qualified. So in the early years, 
regarding concerning the likes of the Khawarij, the Mu'tazila, of those type of um, ideology and groups that deviated is because of, you find that, that um, of those people who allowed people amongst them who were not properly qualified were those who were more qualified present. So they refer back to people who are less qualified when those who are more qualified were, pre were present. So in times of Khawarij, you had the Sahaba. No one knows of any Sahaba who have been described as being from the Khawarij. None of the Sahaba have ever been described as having ideas of the Khawarij. Because at that time, the ones who were not taken from them and took from others, they fell into error. Because they left those who were the best available for those who were less. And we mentioned the hadith, the first hadith we mentioned, the hadith of uh, Jibreel alayhi salam. That regarding concern that individuals who, talk, who were, rejecting, uh, were, were, reject, were rejecting what? And speaking about matter concerning Qadr. In that time, you have Ibn Omar was alive. Because they went back to Ibn Omar. So those people were talking, there were people who said they had sifat of tulab al ilm. But they said they were teaching, they were studying as some ideas, didn't refer back to the proper sources, and they fell into misguidance. So the person always refer back in certain masail to the best available. But in all masail, refer to the most qualified amongst us. Always refer back to the most qualified amongst us in certain masail. But when we leave this, then we fall into, into error. So it mentioned regarding uh, that it mentioned after then that uh, at Tirmid Rahimullah in his narration, they mentioned La yadri kathirun min al nas that many don't know these matters. Amin al halal here. Am min min al haram, where the ones they, they don't know is this from halal or from haram. They don't know is this from halal and from haram. Nam. So that's the narration, or the word I can clarify uh, what mentioned at Tibr Rahimullah. So he mentioned regarding concerning those matters that uh, want to be mindful. So regarding concerning those matters which uh, the person is unclear. That uh, we can somewhat hey, discuss, we discuss concerning those matters more in detail regarding khilaf, khilaf between the ulama and the guideline that one should follow in those matters. So, regarding concerning those matters, then he mentioned regarding and continue the hadith, then he mentioned uh, that a person who protect himself from the shubahat, avoid shubahat. Then, and that's concerned those matters that are doubtful. And regarding concerning those matters which is uh, shubahat, from shubah, those matters which is doubtful. Which all of them mentioned they mean concerning mushtabahat, those things which are unclear. So those matters which are said to be doubtful, that the Muslim, that of the things that the Muslim guards and protect, two things, is deen, and also his own honor by avoiding those things. Is deen, if you go into shubahat, then the person and some part of the person might fall into thing which is attacking at uh, concerning his deen, we concern uh, uh, which attacking his deen, and also his honor, where now he's open for people to now to point the finger at him and to and him to uh, and to attack his honor. So the person has to be mindful of this regarding falling into thing which is shubahat. So shubahat today is all types. Yeshua, in our time, I would say these things are not new. The Prophet of Islam is kind of somewhat guiding us regarding how to approach these things when they occur. But these things does occur. So regarding mention, the one who protects themselves from Shubahat, where at, uh, the Ittika mention, Jala Baina Hu Baina Shay has uh, has uh, has the, where a person put something in between himself and that thing. So the person can try to put in between himself and that thing a barrier. So of those things regarding shubahat today are many. Shubahat regarding Islam in general. That people try to paint a uh, some. And the shubahat, they occur from external and also internal. The shubahat are internal and external. 
And for each, they try to put uh, the ulama they mentioned regarding that the shubahat that the people place on Islam, that as for the Quran, they place shubah regarding one, the actual proofs uh, concerning what we call concerning that uh, the, the source of Islam, the source of Islam. Most does not try to attack the Quran directly. They just don't believe in it. But regarding so they can somewhat, so you know the Muslims are being very difficult for them to kind of somewhat to attack Islam by the Quran. So sometimes they, they do, but not to the same extent as they place in the, the Sunnah. So a lot of the Shubah that they try to place and attack Islam that they use by way of the, the Sunnah. So giving doubt regarding Hujia to Sunnah, that which is a matter that goes back to the Muslim, not to them. But you find that Muslim come with that, with that Shubah regarding Hujia to Sunnah. What of the sunnah we can use as, as a source of uh, evidence and use concern as a legislation that you find some of the Muslims that they try to attack this point or this matter. And then some, they try to attack the sunnah by way of sabu uh, to sunnah or knock the sunnah by how to criticize or how to criticize and verify the sunnah. We attack either the reward and in most times they choose but they use it by way of the by way of because they are poor regarding the Isnad, they come with some ridiculous ideas regarding Isnad, but they usually kind of somewhat try regarding the matin, how to look at the text and how to understand it based upon their values and their way of thinking, which Islam is not like them. Uh, and they decide, unfortunately, you find some of the Muslim that they fall into this regarding. These matters, are that, so a lot of time they try to attack Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, of those that they try to attack also Abu Reira, and some of the Rewat, Ibn Shihab, some of the Rewat of Hadith, as a way, kind of something to put doubt regarding that these people, uh, put doubt on these people, and in that, put doubt on the Hadith. Uh, so that's concerning a Shubahat, so the Muslim, regarding concerning Shubahat, that he tries to, of, uh, Put our, uh, uh, protect himself from shubahat regarding concerning matters akadiyah, matters regarding belief, and also matters regarding ahkamu sharia. So the Muslim try to, regarding these matters, that uh, as it will have a negative impact regarding his uh, practice of Islam and also uh, how he is looked upon by the Muslim regarding falling into these shubahat. And uh, his level of concerning, of credibility, would be attacked. So that's concerning those matters. And you find concerning in, re in real time, as they say, you find that those people are said to be people of ilm. But they, have certain sh they themselves also are falling into their method of how they, how they uh, approach Islam. So the Masail, that of those who reject regarding stoning, those who reject this, and they reject aspect of the sunnah based upon, they mention, Yaf Khabar Ahad, they start to go into these things. And most of the people go into these things. There are people who are least known for the ilm of those, 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 those particular areas. The people who are least known for those particular areas, they are the ones who are the main attackers. And that becomes another problem. That becomes another of the problems. So to know regarding various science, of Islam and with each science have the people that are known for those science and to refer always to those of the science regarding these areas that people might have shubahat regarding them so regarding al-fiqh go back to the ulama who are said to be the fuqaha in matters concerning hadith go back to the people who are said to be muhaddithun in matters regarding usul go back to the usuliyin and the matter concerning tafsir, go back to the mufassirin. So the person go back to those who are said to be specialists in their field. Uh, so, and, and they would assist them regarding, uh, make it easier for them regarding these matters. So as concerning this hadith, I mentioned that the person protect his, uh, his deen, protect, uh, protect himself from shubahat, then the person will protect his deen and also his honor. And it mentioned the person who fall into the shubahat, man waqa fi shubahat, the one who fall into it, then waqa uh, fil haram, the person then, he falls into that which is haram. And that's 
so that's concerning those matters regarding the general meaning of the hadith. So the general, the more detailed meaning of some of the word of some of the points of the hadith uh, is relating, as we had just uh, mentioned. So that in short, Allah will uh, then it mention the end of the hadith of the point that he mentioned regarding Allah wa inna fi jasad mudra ida salahat salah al jasad kullu wa ida fasadat fasad al jasad kullu. Then I mentioned regarding concern that that uh, the impact of the shubahat on the person. Then I mentioned that in the body there's a piece of flesh. And I mentioned the that a small piece of flesh. If it is upright, the entire body would be upright. Regarding the personal way of how the person think, regarding matters regarding uh, his aqidah and also the person regarding how he applies Islam. So the person uh, body is upright. The person see piety, goodness from that person. Then know that is a sign because internally that person uh, is uh, in turn the person is doing things uh, of approach which is correct. So that matter regarding the person's akida being upright. And then things also will be in upright. Also the person understanding regarding matters concerning deen is upright. Then also it have a positive impact. And also the person become fasadat. If there's corruption regarding understanding and application. So regarding the person being upright or having fasad, corruption is based upon the person, the way that they understand and also how they apply Islam. Uh, then I mention. Allah wa hiya al qalb, and this is the, the heart. So the heart is the one where regarding that uh, if it is upright, then the entire body will be upright. And also, if it is corrupted, then the entire body becomes corrupted, indicating that so, uh, showing there is a, rela a relationship between the internal and the external. That the person who is pure, who's, uh, upright, who is pure inside, then this will reflect regarding his outward action. Also to be in mind that you might find certain people outwardly, and this is, you might find thing which is good, external, but you have aspect, aspect of them that is internal that needs to be corrected. So you have things that may be internal that needs to be corrected, even though they may display some aspect of good externally. Uh, and that could be for various reasons. So that's concerning what they mentioned regarding the meaning of this particular uh, hadith to show the Muslim that he pays attention regarding those matters which is regarding uh, trying to better regarding his understanding of Islam, how his view of Islam, and also try to rectify regarding things that are internal, regarding matters concerning ikhlas and uh, the likes. So with this, the person then uh, they mentioned regarding concerning of ways for the person to purify himself internally. How to purify oneself internally. And the opposite will also bring about fasad. So of those way, ways of purifying oneself internally, that one concerning Islam al-Qalb regarding tadabul Qur'an. The person is somewhat to ponder over the Qur'an. And also likewise, ponder over the Sunnah. So to ponder over the Nusus Sharia, to ponder over the text of the, Qur the Quran, the Sunnah. So to get the proper understanding, if the person then, that will help to purify the person. Also he could, uh, the person who at least have not much uh, his understanding, he doesn't read with the proper understanding, then that also can bring about negative impact. Also the person that, uh, regarding concerning that uh, purify the person's heart, that... Uh, Tadabul Quran, Qirat al Quran, Kasira, the person read the Quran much of purifying a person's heart, sit in Ali Salah, the person being a companionship of people who are upright. Uh, also, regarding uh, of that concerning the Wam al Dhikr, also the person constantly regarding a Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also Akhl al Halal, person try to eat from Halal, wa Kasb al Halal. And also the person earning is from halal, ishtanab, al-muharramat, or shubahat. The person leaving away those things which is shubahat, and also things which is haram. So these are ways to help the person to purify himself internally. Nam, uh, 
<coughs> so these are some of the ways regarding mention and other things that uh, the person can use to his advantage. So these are ways to purify oneself regarding these things that are available. And the, the person who can be somewhat less involved in these things with a person that... Uh, uh, and also purify concerning that the person also that uh, ta'allum al Islam, the person also tried to learn Islam correctly. Learning of Islam correctly. So the person who didn't learn Islam correctly, then it will have a negative impact regarding internally and also externally for him. Nam, also the person who read the Quran but without tadabbur, then the person will not be able to benefit his reading, but it is not having its true impact. Because he's not understanding and also added to that, applying what he has learned. So to read and to understand and then apply. Then also the person has somewhat other step, sitting with the people of righteousness. But if the person see the people are known for facade and idle bidah, then the person art becomes corrupt and also his action becomes corrupt. Dawam al-dhikr, the person not constant to remember of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the person will be busy with those things, but the, the person tongue is busy with regarding al-dhikr, not busy with qil wa qal. Not busy with qil wa qal. Uh, and the person eat from halal, wa kasbuhu halal, that a person gain earnings from halal, and he eat from halal, then also that keeps the person's heart pure, and also the person, he avoids those things which is haram, and shubahat. So things regarding haram and things that are shubahat that he tries to uh, keep a distance, keep himself a distance from those things, keep himself a distance away from those things regarding haram and also shubahat. So that in short ta'ala, ways of purifying oneself. And then that will, as mentioned, will reflect, reflect upon the person's action and behavior. Reflect upon the person's action and behavior. But when you see a person that I mentioned that uh, his actions and behavior that and even though he's practiced something like that something seems out of sequence. They know there's something wrong internally. There's something wrong internally. There's something that seems positive, but also something that seems to be out of place. They know there's something wrong internally in his heart. With that, inshallah ta'ala, is uh, the ashar uh, tafsili regarding the particular, uh, this particular hadith and I mentioned that we'll add to this regarding next week session we'll discuss concerning matters regarding al-khilaf so we understand regarding this matter regarding al-khilaf uh, as some of the ulama mentioned regarding that the word uh, shubahat uh, mushtabahat is regarding khilaf al-ulama so we'll discuss concerning what are some of the adab that one should be mindful of regarding when there's a khilaf between the ulama uh, what is the way to kind of somewhat to navigate and the, the approach one should have regarding the khilaf between the ulama. So we'll discuss, and also with that is the person knowing who are the people who are said to be the ulama that we can refer back to. What are, these, what are their qualities? Nam. Uh, so that's concerning. So we'll discuss some of those matters. And you find that, uh, so I said regarding concerning this book, I said from this uh, hadith, also it shows regarding the importance regarding that the person have that skill we are one concerning how to identify halal and haram and when those things which is unclear. How to approach things that are unclear. So that requires for the person that uh, as a way of preparing oneself, that I would say that Islam come and study of a package. So regarding concern and a system. So regarding concerning study of Islam, there's a system in place. So the person can achieve, so the person can, have a, 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 can ach, a, achieve what they set out to achieve, which is learning things properly. So of those things you have concern in this matter regarding ilm usul al-fiqh. So ilm usul al-fiqh, that also the important science to be studied in the proper way, where usul al-fiqh can cover certain basic things or certain things the person has to be aware of. One, adilla to sharia. What are said to be adilla to sharia? What can be used as evidence or source of Islam? Quran wa sunnah. So those evidence that are agreed upon and those that are disagreed. Or there's some discussion regarding them being said to be a primary evidence. So the person knowing what are, what are considered as sources, evidence. Adilla, delil. Is the qawl of Sheikh delil 
قول الصحابي دليل قول تابعي دليل are these things evidence العرف the custom of people can that be used as a دليل so the person knowing is ijma a دليل or not is qiyas a دليل so the person being a uh, the person is clear as to what is taken as a دليل so identifying what is said to be a دليل the first step then of those things the person has to understand regarding uh, uh, how to extract the hukum from the delil, from what he ought to be a delil. How do I extract hukum, take rulings from those things? Nam, then the person on what are said to be the rulings that can be passed on different things. And we mentioned those things before. What are the rulings that are passed, that are passed and things, and how the ulama use those, uh, what are those, uh, the vocabulary that are used regarding those things, the terminology that are used regarding those things. Then also the person know regarding who's a mujtahid, who's an alim that I can refer to on a particular matter. Who said to be a mujtahid? Who said to be a specialist in that field? So you have ijtihad regarding a person, a mujtahid regarding ilmul hadith. But who's a muhadid that I can refer, that I can refer back to? I want to know the hukum on a hadith. Who do I go back to? I want to know is the thing halal and haram. Who do, I go, who do I go back to the reference? So the person knowing who's a mujtahid in the various fields that they are. What are their, qualifi what are their qualification? And know who fit that qualification. Because sometimes we try to, we mention fulan alama. One of a title that you got a person of great knowledge. But he's a mujtahid. Do you mean that alama slash mujtahid? So when you use a term, and when the term is used, is it being used in its proper context? And the person using it, does he know what it means? Fulam, alama, fulan, kibar ulama, who's the kibar ulama? What do you mean by kibar ulama? If the person doesn't know what does it mean, okay, who's an ex they said, who's, who, full, who fit that category of kibar ulama? Sheikh Islam in kibar ulama? So the person says, sometimes they're knowing, so usul al fiqh help the person how to put those things in perspective. Because sometimes things, words are used, but even the user himself is unaware of the word that is being used, that he is using. And especially in the time, they will find that many uh, khilaf even between Ayri Sunnah is known how to put things in perspective. And the person knows if I'm, and that will remove less of the khilaf or at least less of the shiqaq and those type of separation between ourselves. Now, especially in the time that in the last 20 years that we've been facing a lot of and differences, that is it, should it uh, have gone to that extent? Should it have gone to the extent that it has, that it, some took it. Some took it to an extent that, was it needed? Was it valid? That's the question to be asked. So with that, inshallah, we'll continue next week regarding those matters. Wa bilay ta'ala tawfiq, wa hadi ila sabil.